barbecue cook-off. Yep. Amen. Yep. Amen. But that's all right, because uh, you know what? You guys are important. And uh, whenever I address a group of folks who mean a lot to my town, the least I can do is put on some decent clothes. Yep. And uh, I want to thank Amy and Mike Mills, and I think we all need to give them a round of applause before I say it again. They bring uh, as much to this community as any other organization or business in this city. And it really means a lot that they put in the hard work because it's a year-long effort every year to put this together. And it's a huge economic impact on our city, and I just can't tell you how much I and the aldermen and the entire town appreciate each and every one of you being here. I also want to thank the uh, World Food Championships for being here as well. Uh, of course, I want to thank um, all of you for being here. And we are the barbecue capital of Illinois here in Murfreesboro. Yes. And there's no doubt about it. I've got legislation that I hope is going to be able to get through the, and it's more of a resolution, through the House and the Senate and then signed by the governor. We'll see in the spring session of next year to actually get this city declared officially through both chambers and the governor's office as the barbecue capital of Illinois. So, as, thank you. And so as I go throughout the event, throughout this, I may be, you know, touching base, shaking hands, saying hi, and getting your contact information because I'm going to need some of you guys' help in making that happen. So uh, without anything, uh, without any further ado, I just want to welcome you guys here. I know most of you have some kind of, like, identification. I said last year, and the promise is good again this year. If you're here with a barbecue team and you keep it under 80 miles an hour on Walnut Street, you get one free pass, okay? <laughs> Thank you very much, and I'll turn it back over to Amy. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> I'd like to take a moment here and just welcome you all, but at the same time, I would like to welcome Bill Gage, our KCBS representative. And, and, and Debbie and Carolyn, uh, they came here for how many years now? Five years. Wow. What you all have done for this contest is incredible. We thank you. Here's Bill Gates. Yeah, I will. I will. Yeah. Okay. Uh, welcome to the 27th year of the uh, Praise the Lord Murfreesboro Barbecue Cook-Off. Give a big hand. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, the reps you have here. We have the uh, MBN reps, Rowley and Melzi. Hi. Uh, there, there you are. We've got Debbie Gage, my wife, and Carolyn Wells, and myself will do the KCBS. And I'd like to introduce Mike Mills. Okay, Mike is going to talk at the end. Okay, uh, a couple of things. I have stickers here for everybody. And the other thing is, if you have not got your KCBS turn-in boxes, uh, you, before you leave this meeting, you need to see Debbie and Carolyn. Hi, my name is Shane Alley. I'm from Lincoln, Illinois. It's my first time judging the um, fish category. And um, what we just judged here were uh, six different kinds of uh, fish. Um, to be honest with you, the best one that I thought won would be number six. It, it's had catfish, probably some crab, maybe some rice as well, wrapped up in bacon. You can't, <laughs> you can't get any better than bacon, so uh, that was my favorite. Okay. Alf Roman from Arthur, Illinois. Delicious fish, all of them. This one was my favorite, number three, because it had more of a... Oh, there was a more spicy taste to it. It was very, very good. They were all good. Number one was great. This, how do you pick? But we did. It was good. Steve Steiner, Murfreesboro, Illinois. Here, it was about a mile and a half. So, so it it was quite a trip getting here. Uh, we're doing the fish contest here at Praise the Lord. I like the fish in the number one box, and the number. 
three and four were good. The uh, other two, that the crab, I just wasn't sold on the crab and bacon, and I love both of them, but I don't know about mixed together. I'm Kay Lyerly from Murfreesboro, and I had to drive real far, too. Um, but um, uh, as far, I liked uh, number three best, but um, three, four, and one were very, very close for me. And um, I did not care for number two. Mm -hmm. Thank you all very much. That's right. Y'all want to talk about what you ate? Fish. Uh -huh. Oh, we had some great fish here. Uh, first off, uh, this contest is so great. Uh, my wife and I drove from Clearwater, Florida, just to come for this contest. So that's how much this contest means to me. What's one way? One way a little over a thousand miles. So we came up just for this. Uh, but getting back to the fish entries, uh, we had. Uh, Three entries, and they all were very good. Uh, the second entry was extremely good because it had a really nice aftertaste, and it was an extremely good fish. It wasn't overcooked. It was moist and excellent. Thank you. I'm Chuck Averwater with the MBN. I'm the judge of liaison on the board of directors for MBN. And uh, just got through uh, judging whole hog here in Murfreesboro at Praise the Lord contest. And uh, we did the whole hog blind. And as you can see, we have four entries at our table and all were judged comparatively. In my opinion, 
I felt like uh, this one down here on this end was probably my favorite. It just seemed to have much better balance of flavor. It had good smoke flavor in it as well. Um, the tenderness was good in all three sections, meaning the ham, the loin, and the shoulder. And um, you could really taste the smoke in it, whereas the other ones, they just were not, they didn't seem to be as, uh, you know, as pronounced when it came to the flavor. Some of these were just a little bit drier than some of the other ones. I think you're going to pull this. <laughs> I pull it. I think gloves. Okay. <laughs> hey, it's, it's a little warm. <laughs> Keep talking, Mike. Everything in the game enhances the flavor of the meat. I think you've got a beautiful color there. That glaze, again, we thinned it down with a little apple juice, put it on there, put three light coatings on it. Uh, the meat's going to speak for itself. Yeah, I told him, I said, I pulled it. <laughs> and by the way, him and I have been for 30 plus years. I've been telling the past five years, I've been looking for help. Well, I come up here, I'm, I'm, I'm going to rent a mule. I said, man, I got a shoulder. I said, I can pull it from the grill. So I probably pulled a few thousand in my life. But uh, as you, what I'm going to do here, David, I'm going to give you a part of that. For the Boston Bud, picnic itself goes up. Shoulder made up of like eight different muscles. And what you can do, Good shoulder, a little bit getting good. And also, use the bar. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to slow that right there. We've got smoke, which is going to trace all the way through this thing. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to start off that way. We're going to take it off there. Yep. Good. That's what about that shoulder. You know, you, you, when you real miss the pull, it's going to pop up. Because, you know, they're so big, is that you? That's bark. And part of it. This is the first time I haven't cooked the shoulder for 25 years. One of the main shoulders. Just one a couple of times this was shoulder. Final year and shoulder. This is the first time I've ever cooked the This is good sitting here in the pepper seat. I only do shoulder and ribs, so Chris is coming up to help me with the back. That's the part of the hog, like I was saying. My name is Joe Ott. I'm judging uh, shoulder. Uh, we had three of them to judge. Uh, it's. Uh, I thought that was best in appearance. I liked. I liked these two were really comparable in tenderness, and I liked this one's flavor just a tiny bit better. Okay, they were all very excellent. It was difficult to make a selection of which was number 10. I would say that they were all a little bit oversauced because we had to use a lot of napkins. Number one, well, it's true. The first one I thought was a little, a little overcooked and a little mushy. But then again, it may have come off a different rack of ribs. It may have come off a different end. That was my, what I had of it. The second one was my favorite. Yes, it was peppery, but I liked the spice in it. It gave me a, it was a thrill to eat it. Let's put it like that. Number three, it came with sauce. That's the only one that came with sauce. It was very good. Um, it was okay, but not as good as number two. And the last one, it just fell right off the bone, which is good. But then again, I thought it was a little overcooked. And that's my perception. Very delicious ribs, I have to agree with her very much. They were good. However, I had to disagree in my order. I chose number one as the best. I didn't find them to be mushy, I just found them very flavorful, very easy to pull from the bone. They were really terrific and they look absolutely beautiful. I am not a fan of pepper, so number two got my very last place. I took one bite of that and then it affected how I was going to taste everything else. So that was not a good thing for me. All of them were very tender, I thought. Um, I liked 
number one and number three number three came with the sauce and I did like the sauce and I liked the meat and it was it was tasty but number four I found to be a little bland and that's what colored my choice there so I chose number one number three was second number four was third and number two was my fourth pick interesting <laughs> they were all delicious uh, except number two was so peppery I couldn't eat it I just ate a piece off the, the strip um, barbecue ribs is like my very favorite food um, number one was my choice they were beautiful I had they were tender they were juicy it was great and it's too bad I had that first because I think it kind of made my other ones um, a little less uh, appreciative two again was peppery three I didn't like the sauce four was mild and after everything else I thought it was really good and that was my second choice Well, number one to me, hands down, was my favorite uh, for appearance, for taste, for texture. It had moisture, it had uh, color, it had appearance, it had taste. So I scored it a perfect score. Uh, number two, um, I thought it was a little bit dry, uh, a, a tiny little bit underdone. Uh, the flavor profile was more uh, flavor neutral. Um, number three, I thought, uh, looked good had uh, a nice flavor profile. I did like the sauce. Um, I scored that number three. And then number four was my second choice. Uh, I liked the flavor. I, I loved the appearance. Uh, but it was overcooked. It, it was a little bit mushy and it fell off the bone too much. Thank you. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. To objectively and subjectively. To objectively and subjectively. Barbecue meat as presented to my eyes, my nose, my nose, my hands, my hands, and my palate. I accept my duty. I accept my duty. Be a praise the Lord Murfreesboro barbecue cook-off jet. All of the uh, five categories was uh, very well done and presented. Uh, I felt the first entree was uh, the best as far as the uh, tenderness and taste. Uh, the second one was equally as good, uh, but I felt the taste was not uh, uh, as smoky and as grilled as the number one category. The third category was a little bit dry and um, I didn't feel the flavor was as good. Uh, the fourth entree I thought was good. Uh, I thought the taste was a little bit uh, not as good as the first one. The third one I thought had a unique taste. I don't know if there was a little bit of uh, fire starting material or something, but I just felt that there was a little bitterness to the meat. Uh, I thought, uh, and it lacked a little bit of tenderness. So uh, all in all, uh, I thought the entrees were uh, exceptional and uh, there was uh, just uh, minor differences between the five. For me, the second entree, the skin was tough. It pulled clean off as I took a bite and wasn't chewable. Probably the best texture and uh, tenderness for me was entry number three, and I also thought it had an excellent taste. Mm -hmm. 
pick up that. Okay. Sure. And we need to adjust that less. I'm on. Okay, fine. Uh, number four was uh, considered the best at the table. Consensus of all. Number four. Number five was a little too dry. And uh, that was it. The others fell in right behind number four. Okay. I really enjoyed number four. Uh, I thought it was moist, had a good flavor, and uh, had a really good appearance. Uh, number five, a little dry, but uh, you know, not a bad flavor. All in all, uh, pretty good samples. Hi, I enjoyed uh, number two and three. They both had great texture, tenderness, and flavor. Um, I thought uh, number five was a little bit dry and not that flavorful. Number one, which I didn't think looked that good coming in, I thought it was had a very good flavor and good texture. And um, two, three, and four I thought were all very, well, very good, very well done. Um, I thought two, three, and four were my favorites. They both had um, flavor, tenderness, and smoke flavor. I thought both three and four were great. If somebody wouldn't mind. What did I just do? What did I just do? You put the fat in towards the back. Yeah. I know. I was like, ah, I gotta turn it around. Get it all the way over the edge of the camera and beat every bit of that Okay. Um, all five of them tasted really good. The only thing that I had a problem with was number two. It was really mushy. Everything else got a high score, between a nine or an eight. Um, the only one that got a low score was the tenderness on number two. As far as taste, um, number two tasted really good. I would say between that one and number one would be the best taste. Number one was a little tough. Oh, number one was a little tough. This is one, two, three, four, five. And as you can see, number one was a little tough. Number two was delicious, hence the bone. Number three was good, hence the bone, meaning I ate it all. Number four was very syrupy and sugary. And then number five was the same. It hid the meat. It hid the flavor of the meat. Just the hard fat off the brisket? Yeah. Hey, you don't want to just We're trying to leave a little bit so that way we flip it upside down like this and we cook it the fat kind of goes into the meat and give it a little bit of juice. Hey, you know what I just realized? What's up, for? That bag was sealable and you cannot reseal it on the brisket. So we're going to have to, I think there's some saran wrap in here. We're going to have to saran wrap. That's fine with me, man. All we have to do is just roll it shut. We're cooking it in like five hours. Yeah. We have to keep it. It has to be, if it's full, if it's under in like 40 degree heat over that four hours, it's like. <coughs> Next time I'll try that. No, I'm all right. It's just uh, they are warm. warm but... I'll fan them. Or the bar, bar to one side, right? If you want, or if you can. I would say my favorite would be number five. 
had had a good taste and the tenderness was good on it. Uh, number four, I didn't like it all. It had too much pepper on it for myself. And uh, three, number three to me had a lot of fat in it around it. I had the last piece, number five, was the perfect way to end a contest. It tasted just what you expect and hope for in this category. Uh, number four was way too dry. And um, all of them uh, had this professional appearance to them. Their presentation was top quality and that's always good to see. Uh, number five was my favorite. It was moist and I liked the taste. Number three was probably my least favorite. Uh, to me it um, was kind of dry and just didn't have much of a taste. I too like number five best, but I thought it was a little over salty uh, with, the, with the flavor. I like salt, but I just thought it was a little too overpowering for the meat. And number four was my least. I thought the meat was too exposed to the fire and it developed a burnt and blackened layer, which had a bitter taste. And uh, I thought that really detracted and it was a very dry piece of meat. I guess I'm gonna make it unanimous. My favorite was number five as well. I thought it had a really, really good flavor. I thought it had really good tenderness. Uh, I guess if I could make a comment to the cook, I would maybe suggest that uh, they should have trimmed that little bit of fat that was still on there off. I think that would have maybe got them from an eight to a nine on my tenderness score. Uh, thought number one uh, had a decent flavor. Uh, thought number two had a, a good beefy flavor, which is what we're looking for in brisket. Uh, and I uh, really liked uh, the burnt end on number two. I thought it had a, a nice uh, flavor to it. Number three was really unappealing to me all the way around. It had, uh, as far as appearance wise, had some really visible fat running through it. And, and that uh, fat detracted from both the taste and tenderness of that entry. As well as I, I thought number three had a some kind of a sour taste that I couldn't really identify to it. Uh, number four, I'm going to again echo a lot of what other people said. Uh, felt like that one had a, a burnt taste that was that was real unpleasant, uh, somewhat bitter, and it was also uh, kind of dried out and almost chewy, which uh, again takes away from the, the tenderness score as well. Thank you. 